Right, so you have problems with your top up unit. To start, this is the float switch in the reservoir. This, if not operating correctly, will shut the whole system down. This float should be raised by the level of the water. As your water level drops, the float drops and shuts the pump down so it will not operate. So this is the prime check to do before anything else. This should be raised at the top to make any of the circuit flow through the rest of the float switches. Make sure this is operating first. If this isn't operating, the whole top up unit will not work. Next. Now onto this I have a light to substitute for the pump. This is to make sure you can see exactly what I'm doing. Right, the connector, float switch, take it out of the aquarium, put it on one side. This is the wire coming up to connect to the float switch. This plug may be red or black, either. Right, now we have a very low voltage here. Make sure everything is plugged in. Your reservoir is full of water and the level is above the float switch in the reservoir. Here we have about 12 volts going through it, no more, perfectly safe, there's 12 volts going through this, you can handle it, you will not get a shock, there's no risk whatsoever. I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to short this pin out against the casing. Right, now the lights come on that's simulating the pump that shows everything is working from the top up unit up to this point take the screwdriver off switches off the pump short that out and the pump works doesn't need to be a screwdriver piece of wire same thing if I can get hold of it short that out pump will work. Once again I emphasize there's no risk here whatsoever you cannot get a shock and this test shows that everything up to this point is working. Now we'll take the float switch. Double unit that we have here with a safety float on out of the aquarium, do this out so it's separately. In this case, bring both floats down, put it the right way up, <laughs> both floats down to the minimum, water levels low. I'm going to connect up this switch and the pump is activated. Okay, again, make sure these are well seated together. If they aren't, it won't work, period. Fractionally apart like that, still won't work. Well pushed together. It's a firm joint, it can't come apart if it's on the cord, so no worries there. Float switch. As you can see, this is what should happen. In your hand, out of the aquarium, both flow switches down, like that, and the pump should be on. Uh, don't leave it to run like this if it's dry, but you can see what's happening, obviously. This is why I've used the light. So, this is the main float switch that activates the top-up unit. As the water level rises, it will switch off the pump. This one, the second float switch, is serving no purpose whatsoever at this point because this one is doing the job. Once again, water level drops, pump switch is on, water rises, pump switch is off. And it will cycle this every time the water level drops or evaporates, pump water in, stop pumping. 
The second switch is your safety switch. In the unlikely event that this switch should fail, just tilt that a bit. Right. In the unlikely event that this switch should fail and jam on, which is highly unlikely. What could happen is the likes of a snail or something similar could jam in here and jam this float switch. Now what would then happen is the top up unit would keep on running and overfill your aquarium up to the point of where your top up unit emptied and then the float switch in the reservoir would stop it. But we're going to work on the basis that this is jammed physically. So as you can see both switches are at the right about the same level. Water level will continue to rise. This float can't move because it's jammed or failed. So this one comes into effect and starts to rise. It has now taken over the job of the prime float switch and will cut out the pump. At this point this one takes over as you can see from the prime one. Now you can continue to operate on this state of affairs although I don't recommend it because it means your safety advantage of this float switch is no longer effective you're operating on only the one float switch. So if this is the case then this one wants replacing or get rid of the snail or whatever else. So once again your water level from here would be about there somewhere approximately in this case as you can see so your water level drops this one's right down any road water level drops switches on the pump water level rises switches off the pump one other little precaution while I have it in my mind is that you've got no power going to the whole unit it's very unlikely that the plug has gone the fuse has gone sorry in the plug it's a 3 amp fuse and just right to carry the load it shouldn't blow the main adapter you can see here just like you have on your unit has this attached lead with it now one other little point because I have had this myself and it's not at first obvious yes. the figure of 8 plug that you see here has to be seated that is not connected it appears to be it needs pushing right in firmly failure to do that will lose all the power that feeds the top up unit so check that first that that is right in and that's about all that can go wrong with it if you have any problems you can always contact me Gordon Lowe G-O-R-D-O-N-L-O-W-E at refloat R-E-E-F-L-O-A-T dot com and I'll get straight back to you if this float switch here fails for any reason I will replace it it's no worries just let me know uh, they are reliable um, I haven't had any problems with them there's always a first time thank you